So the next layer that we're going to add is we're going to add some paint. And I want this to look kind of like a, you know, earth moving equipment. So, you know, those are typically painted primarily yellow and black. So we're going to add some of that right now. So first let me save and then I'll add on a new layer. So just that little folded paper icon and I'll call this one paint. So if I go to paint right here, I have this one that I made a little while ago called vehicle paint. And let me just really quickly show you how that was made. So it's just one layer and all that it is is that it's a color. Now what's special about this here is that smart materials in 3D code default to uh, replace them. But if you click on this triangle and change it to modulate, then it will use, instead of white, it'll use whatever color you have selected here in your color picker. So that's why I get this sort of multicolored preview ball because it could be whatever color I need it to be. So in my case, I'm, I'm going to be making it this bright semi-orange yellow like those earth moving vehicles typically are. And then all that I do then is that it's no metalness, has a sort of a noisy map for the roughness. And then what I have here, this degree is more on flat. So this basically prevents the material from being applied on either convex corners or uh, concave corners. So that's just a good way to catch both of those um, at the same time. And especially since this model is mostly flat, that works really well. I then have a little bit of edge scattering, and then I put in this uh, sort of scratchy uh, texture as my overall layer mask, because that helps it look like the paint has been scratched away by years of wear and tear, while still looking or doing so in a very realistic fashion. So with that, if I preview it, you'll see that the paint is going to be applied everywhere. And I'm going to apply it everywhere, and then I will erase it in certain areas. Although it's looking to me like I need to make some changes to this, so I'm going to go to my Smart Material Editor and change the degree. So, so you see I want there to be a little less paint. Excellent. Okay, so we're starting to get there. So this may be a little early on to be doing a step like this, but I'm going to do it anyway. And that is that I don't want all of this yellow to be sort of the same, uh, the same shade. I'm going to do something really quick now before I start erasing all of it to sort of break up the color a little bit, make it look like age has started to uh, not necessarily wear away at the paint, but just start to uh, degrade it. So if I go to this brush right here, directly beneath the airbrush, my color operations. So let me close this because we don't need a smart material anymore. But I can go to, I believe it's decrease hue. Oh wait, no, increase hue. And you see that where I brush, it'll go from yellow to orange. So if I change the opacity to be very, very low, like maybe 2%, and I'm, this is only that low because I'm currently using a, uh, a mouse. I may actually go get my tablet in a minute here, but for right now I can go in with, with my brush. And, Capacity two again. And I can just start to make very subtle changes to the hue so that it's not all just one color. Okay. 
Okay, great. May continue to touch that up over time, but I just want to do that right now. So now, before I go on painting any more uh, detail, I'm going to uh, start erasing this paint layer from wherever it is that it doesn't belong. So some instances of places where it doesn't belong is that it doesn't belong on these pistons, it doesn't belong on most of this upper assembly, and I'm going to erase it from some of the detail areas like here, and also on these hands, and some of the frameworks, just because I don't want this to be completely yellow. So the best way to do that, if I go with my eraser tool, eraser transparency of 100%, is I can go to the texture editor and start erasing from here instead of doing so in the 3D view. So as an example, like let's say, it can be a little confusing to look at this sometime, especially when you have this many UV shells, but let's say right here, that is, if I'm not mistaken, those are these little pipes on the back here. So what I can do is I can change my stroke mode to be the rectangular marquee, and I'll just erase all of that. So it's much faster than trying to do it, and more precise than trying to do it by hand here. So I'll focus on the main arm here first. So specifically, it might be like these uh, little plates, which are right here. I can go in with my polygon lasso and start to clean those up. And then also in various other areas like, like I said, the cables, the pistons. So I'm going to go ahead and do all of those real quick. Okay, so at this point, there's still a good deal for me to do, but because of how utterly complicated this UV map is, let me see if I can make it a little bit clearer for you guys, but there's a lot of stuff here. So one thing you can do is I can make a new layer, and I'll call this one Highlight and I'll change it to a really obnoxious like royal blue here and I'll paint the objects that I want to erase the paint layer on so just add in a little bit there some there maybe some right there And then what I can do is I can look for these blue marks in my texture view and I'll know which uh, UV shells I'm trying to erase. Okay, now that that's been cleared up I can move back down to my paint layer and continue my erasing work. And when it's all said and done, I can just delete the highlight layer. 